Millions of years ago, in what is today Argentina, a titan roamed through the forest, the Argentinosaurus. It was a giant, even among sauropods, reaching 30 to 35 meters, or 98 to 115 feet in length, and possibly weighing nearly 100 tons. However, despite its vast size, even it was not entirely safe from the most ferocious predator in the lands, the Mapusaurus. The Mapusaurus, meaning Earth Lizard, was first discovered in 1995 in northern Patagonia. The paleontologist who made the finding could tell right away that this was not a normal theropod. To begin with, it was clearly huge, even for larger theropods, with adults believed to have been between 11 and 11.5 meters, or 36 to 38 feet in length, while weighing anywhere from 3 to 5 tons, making it larger than the Allosaurus. It belonged to the Carcharodontosauridae, a group of carnivorous Theropods and was closely related to the giant Giganotosaurus, which it also shared many similarities with. Both heavily resembled one another, with the most major differences being that the Mapusaurus lacked a second opening on its center quadrate, as well as having some discrepancies in the nasal regions, leading to the skulls looking slightly different from one another. The Mapusaurus is currently thought to have been smaller than its relative, although it may have actually been the larger of the two, or at least equal in length, as some individual bones appear to have belonged belonged to extremely large Mapusauruses, which based on said bones would have rivaled the Giganotosaurus. But these finds were too fragmentary and lacked additional evidence, so it was impossible for the paleontologist to deduce how large those particular specimens were. Even if the Mapusaurus was not as colossal as its relative, it was still as deadly as can be. Its gargantuan size made it the top dog in its environment, yet it was also quite sleek in comparison to other large theropods, such as the Tyrannosaurus rex, suggesting that the Mapusaurus Mapusaurus was quite agile and could have been fairly fast, although an exact estimate on its speed has never been made. Additionally, it sported a long and narrow skull, which would have provided better grip when latching onto prey, and this would have been vital to the Mapusaurus as it was a big game hunter. And it didn't hunt alone, as when the excavations of its bones were taking place, another discovery was made that fundamentally changed paleontologists' outlook on the Mapusaurus, as the fossil bed in which the theropod was found held not one or two, or even three Mapusauruses, but at least seven individuals, including both juveniles and adults. Hundreds of bones belonging to this group were recovered and indicated that the sizes of the fallen Mapusauruses ranged from 5 meters or 16.4 feet to over 12 meters or 39.3 feet in length. This was a once-in-a-lifetime discovery, and the paleontologist who made it and oversaw the excavation believed that this pack of killer theropods were up to no good. In a report on the Mapusaurus, it was claimed that this group was after the jackpot of their times, an Argentinosaurus. The Mapusaurus by itself was by no means a match for the giant sauropod, which was more than 15 times heavier than the Mapusaurus. However, as a group, it may have been a different story, and although there is no direct evidence of Mapusaurus hunting or killing any Argentinosaurus, there is indirect evidence that suggested it did, and that proof was mainly found in the Mapusaurus's main killing weapon, its teeth. The teeth were on the shorter side while being serrated, curved, and shaped like knives making them perfect for cutting through flesh, the first sign it hunted the large sauropod. As if it had teeth designed for crushing bone, paleontologists would be able to rule out the idea of it hunting Argentinosaurus, as its bones were far too large and thick to be crushed. However, by having blade-like teeth, the Mapusaurus could have induced massive blood loss with multiple individuals taking bites and chunks out of the giant herbivore. Additionally, the fact that it had a longer skull provided more support, as the length would have allowed it to take the large bites needed to make a dent on the Argentinosaurus. However, it still probably would not have gone after fully grown adults, as those giants would have likely been too large, even for a pack of Mapusauruses to take down. These clashes would have been a spectacular sight, and maybe even pure carnage, as paleontologists are not sure how these packs would have approached the task of bringing down the sauropod. Some think it may have worked together in an organized fashion. However, others think that it was absolute chaos, with the Mapusaurus preferring anarchy, attacking the victim as a bloodlust mob, with no coherent structure or plan. 
Despite the support and partial evidence for this pack hunting theory, not everyone is on board with it. Some think that the Moposaurus did not hunt large sauropods, nor did they hunt in groups, rather believing that a predator trap such as thick mud or quicksand ensnared the seven individuals within a short time frame, and that the unfortunate victims were not related to each other in any way. Furthermore, this counter theory deduced that a deceased herbivore, maybe even an Argentinosaurus, lured the Moposaurus to their deaths, as it is believed that this large theropod would scavenge meat when the opportunity presented itself. And natural traps taking out large numbers of theropods is not a new idea either, as other discoveries have been made, yielding multiple carnivores that died at similar times and in close vicinity to one another, with the cause of death being blamed on a natural predator trap. However, if the Mopusaurus did indeed hunt in packs, this would be a huge find, not just for Mopusaurus, but theropods in general, as virtually all other carnivorous dinosaurs preferred to operate solo. However, the environment that Mopusaurus lived in may have presented a reason for packs to be formed, with one potential reason being the presence of a megasauropod. Furthermore, its environment presented even more reasons for Mapusaurus to hunt in groups, as it was quite sparse and arid. Northern Patagonia 93.9 to 89.6 million years ago, when Mapusaurus roamed, was a rough and hot area, where relief was only found in seasonal streams. Thus, hunting larger prey would allow the Mapusaurus to go longer without eating again. This being said, despite the barrenness of the Mapusaurus' home, there still was some variety, as other dinosaurs, along with Argentinosaurus, included other sauropods and likely some smaller herbivores like hadrosaurids as traces of their presence have been found, though no fossils have yet to be discovered. Other theropods are also believed to have coexisted with the Mapusaurus, including the theropod Scorpio Venator, which would not have posed any threat to the Mapusaurus as it was much smaller. It was also thought once upon a time that a rival in the area would have been a relative of Mapusaurus, Meraxes. This was a giant theropod similar in size that has also been recovered from the formation, though currently most paleontologists do not believe they coexisted, as the Meraxes was found in older rocks, leading to the conclusion that Mapusaurus was the undisputed apex of late Cretaceous Patagonia. And along with dinosaurs, other life was also present, including a surprisingly diverse amount of flora, as hornworts, liverworts, ferns, conifers, and angiosperms, aka flowering plants, would have peppered the landscape, with richer areas of life being found close to the seasonal streams. Additional fauna was also present in these lands, as fossils of dipnones, gar, shelid turtles, squamates, cephenodonts, and crocodilians have been unearthed from this formation. The Mapusaurus roamed these lands for over 3 million years, and would have done so with utmost confidence, thanks to the lack of competitors. It would have rained chaos down upon the residents, especially upon sauropods, making any large theropod proud. It was truly a special and fascinating dinosaur that also helped a lot of importance since it may have been a sociable creature. Hopefully, more attention will be brought to this theropod, perhaps leading to a more conclusive answer on its behavior and hunting patterns. Although, in recent years, it did add a new credit to its belt. As it turns out, the Giganotosaurus featured in Walking with Dinosaurs, starring Nigel Marvin, were most likely actually Mapusauruses, and more movie and TV appearances in the future would also be welcomed.